So uh, to talk on cockroaches, we have our special uh, speaker, Christian C. Lucanias. Christian is an MS forestry student with minor on forest biological sciences at UPLB. He specializes in cockroach systematics and as of date, is probably the only Filipino taxonomist with the most vast knowledge of this much maligned but uh, still very important insect. Christian is uh, currently a research associate under the Terrestrial Cave Arthropod Diversity Project of the UPLB Museum of Natural History. And aside from cockroaches, he is also involved in documenting other insect groups in the Philippines. And at a very young age, Christian has already discovered and described a number of new cockroach and similar species. So ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Christian Lucanias. Christian? Hi, hello. Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, morning, Christian. Let me share my screen. So before we start, I would like to uh, dedicate or dedicate this, this talk to a fellow colleague who passed away. Uh, today is his birthday, uh, so Mr. James Alvarez. Happy birthday, Chris James. Uh, so then let's, I guess we should start the talk. No? Uh, today we'll be discussing a, uh, a part of a, a series of talks that I, I started a few years ago, uh, which is entitled Roach Talks. So this is already the second episode uh, and we'll be talking about a particular a specific genus of cockroach that in the Philippines. This is the genus Alacta. Uh, so before we, we start, so this, this, the results of this study is part of a broader initiative of the Museum of Natural History to document and on record the diversity of terrestrial arthropods in the Philippines. So we, we call this project Colisa Pinas. And so far we have uh, listed around 21,971 species of terrestrial insects. Uh, of course, the other arthropods are still, well, we're still working on it. Uh, and these numbers, as you see here, are not really up to date, especially those with asterisk. Uh, so we're still working on searching for the literatures in order to update this, this list. Uh, as for introduction, I guess I would like to ask everyone uh, through the chat box. What is the first thing that comes to your mind when you see or hear the word cockroach? So what, what is your perspective on cockroaches? So please type your answers on the chat box. Chat. Some would say scary, dirty, peste sa bahay, nakakadiri. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Pest, plant, shrimp, pest. Dirty. So I, we're seeing uh, similar trends of answers here that cockroaches are dirty. So they are perceived as uh, scary. Or, uh, ew, ew. Uh, but of course, not all cockroaches are, are as we perceive. You know? As we we'll go through the talk, I want to change at least at a little bit a perspective of our participants, our viewers, on how on how they view cockroaches are. So cockroaches uh, belong to the order Blatudea. They are depressed because as you can see, many people do not like them. So they 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 become sad. They are depressed. <laughs> Actually the, the word depressed here means uh, they're dorsoventrally flattened. So as we observe in our in the, in the household cockroaches, they're able to sneak into crevices, especially because they are flat. Uh, they are chewing mouth parts. And I think some of us uh, have experienced being bitten by a cockroach. If, if not, they, they know of news of being bitten by cockroaches. Uh, they have a shield-like pronotum, 
which makes them uh, which is one of the noticeable characters of cockroaches and they are one of the oldest terrestrial arthropod groups no? uh, they are highly opportunistic which allowed them to inhabit almost every type of, of niche or habitat and they are very variable in form uh, presently there are around 4600 described species and surely there are a lot more to, that remains to be described for most of us, this is the usual cockroaches that we find at home. You know? I labeled here the different parts of the cockroaches that we might encounter later through the discussion. So of course you have your antenna. This is the shield-like pronotum, which hides or covers the head of the cockroach. You have your wings, which is separated into the tegmina or the first pair of wings and the hind wing, which is usually used for flight. Then you have your abdomen, and uh, important taxonomic characters such as the supraanal plate and the subgenital plate. Then in terms of the leg, as with other uh, insects, cockroaches have three pairs of legs, which are the pronoto, uh, the pro leg, the mid leg, and the hind leg. Yeah. Aside from these, uh, other important taxonomic characters would include your supraanal plate, this is for males. No? These are the cerci and the subgenital plate, which where you will see the style and where the genitalia is usually is actually placed. No? So this is the genitalia of a male, a lacta. Uh, for this particular family of cockroaches, their genitalia has been flipped, switched, or, or rotated. No? such as that the left phalomere is actually placed on the right side of the subgenital plate if you view it dorsally. And the right phalomere is placed on the left side. So uh, for the sake of discussion, we won't be dealing much with the genitalia, uh, but rather focus on the external morphology of, of the alacta group. Uh, since we've already, I, I guess many are already familiar with cockroaches, I would like to ask some questions. So through, we'll be starting some polls. You know? So the first question is, do you think this is a cockroach? So through the poll, please answer if this is a cockroach or not. So we're seeing some yes and no's. I'm gonna end the poll in a minute. Okay. Okay, so as you can see here, interestingly enough, uh, majority thinks that this is a cockroach. Uh, unfortunately, no, this is a mantis, a deadlift mantis. Uh, but it is actually one of the closest relatives of cockroaches. So they belong to the same uh, superorder Dictyoptera. Yeah, so this is Jeroplatis sp, also from the Philippines. Okay, next question. Which among these is a cockroach? Let me start the poll. So which of these two is a cockroach? Is it A or is it a is on the one on the left side and B is on the right side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I guess everyone has voted. Uh, and the correct answer is they're actually both cockroaches. These are two uh, genera of beetle mimicking cockroaches from the genus Diploptera and er a female Ergaula. Okay, next question. Uh, so, which among these is, how do you start this? Yeah, which among these is not a cockroach? Is it A, B, C, or D? Which is not a cockroach? You can see many think that the one on the leftmost side is not a cockroach but in reality all of these are cockroaches no? so 
as you see these ones, uh, some of these are beetle babies from the genus Prosoplecta, the one that looks like a ladybug. And the rest are, well, they're actually all cockroaches. And last, for the last question, okay, so is this a, is this a cockroach? So as you can see, uh, majority said that this is not a cockroach. Uh, well, partially it's true, this is a termite, but according to recent studies, based on uh, morphological characters like the proventriculus and the genitalia, as well as molecular phylogenies indicate that uh, termites are actually eusocial cockroaches. So the correct answer is this is actually a cockroach. So this is from the genus Mesotitermis. So as you can see, cockroaches are uh, come in various forms, in colors and in sizes. Uh, and in the Philippines, I don't know. So why do we need to study cockroaches? First and uh, foremost, is because of their ecological importance. Uh, cockroaches, I think most of us would think, uh, perform a, an important role in decomposition, you know, primarily through uh, degradation of organic materials, turning them into smaller bits for uh, microorganisms to, to decompose. Uh, also, due to their uh, setae or their spines on their legs, they are able to disperse microorganisms from a particular area to another, and, and therefore enhancing uh, decomposition. Uh, aside from decomposition, there are, all, there are several records of cockroaches being primary pollinators of very specific plants, which includes Uvaria, uh, uh, a few species that are found in Southeast Asia and some in South America. Uh, also, there are some species that are able to disperse seeds. Uh, some parasitic plants like Balanophora have been reported to, to be dispersed by cockroaches. Uh, there are also several species of cockroaches that turn to herbivory or that eat, organ uh, that eat plants. By including this Blattella asahinae, which was observed to feed on cabbages and lettuce in Sariaya Quezon. There are also some species that feed on roots of orchids and have been known to, uh, or have been recorded as pests in such certain areas. And most of all, uh, cockroaches serves as prey to larger, to, to predators that that keep the balance of, of the ecosystem. Uh, so in the Philippines, uh, we currently have 129 reported species. You know? So this is a graph of uh, the number of species described per year. And in, uh, indicated here are the persons responsible in uh, reporting or discovering these cockroaches in the country. So out of 129 species, we have 73 endemic species, or those species that can only be found in, in the Philippines. So majority of the people who work in cockroaches of taxonomy in the Philippines are foreigners. Uh, it is only until recently that someone worked, a uh, Filipino work on, on cockroaches. So in the Philippines, we have at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven families of cockroaches, although this is still debatable, as the family Ectobidae has been recently split into several families. So among those, we have two families in the, in the Philippines, but excluding the, the termites, which emerge with the cryptocercidae. So as you can see, there are indicated here in Termitoidea, Termitoidea, the epifamily, Termitoidea. So within these families, uh, we have several representatives from Picolidae and Latinidae and Corridini, which actually all have very high rate uh, percent of endemicity. Uh, 
almost all species reported from of this family in the Philippines are endemic. Meanwhile, we also have some introduced species from the subfamily Oxyhaloini of Laberidae. And uh, yeah. So all in all, uh, there is 56.59% endemicity of cockroaches in the Philippines. And of course, this would still change as more species are, are being discovered. So within this, within those, uh, we have 11 species that, has, that, are, that were introduced in the country, uh, 45 native but non-endemic species, and as I mentioned a while ago, 73 species that are endemic. Distribution-wise, uh, Luzon has the most number of, of species, probably because it is the most explored. In, uh, in terms of collection. You know? We have 25 in Mindanao and a few uh, species reported in smaller islands. Interestingly enough, there were no records from Bohol, from Panay, from Masbate and Marinduque. So hopefully in, in the future, we'll, we'll be able to rep report species from these islands. Uh, also in the Batanes and Babuan group of islands, yeah. they'll have no reported species from there. So the topic of this talk would be would focus on particular genus Alacta. So they, currently there are around 47 species worldwide. Uh, they are distributed from India to Australia. Actually, a few a few new species have been described from India in the last in the last few years. Uh, they are nocturnal, like most cockroaches, and they are arboreal. They live usually on, on tree trunks, and they hide on the barks of the trees, which makes them quite hard to spot, especially in the day. So usually go out at night in order to observe them. And they're mostly characterized by having the cold light only on the fourth Tarsomere. The tarsomere is the, the portion of the, the legs. Where, uh, so uh, according to studies, this allows them to, to run fast on, on, tree, on the trunks of the trees. So the, the 47 species are distributed into three species groups uh, established by Roth in 1993. So first is the Funebris group, which is uh, described to be completely black, or at least with how with few uh, white borders on the pronotum. So there are around seven species described, from Borneo, Sulawesi, and New Guinea, or Papua New Guinea. And then there's the Hamifera group, with around 16 species, from India to Borneo, and the Polygrapha group from China to Australia. Uh, in the Philippines, Princes in 1966 reported uh, the genus, uh, the species Alacta hamifera in the Philippines, but Roth in 1993 places that record to be doubtful. So the goal of this uh, study is to document the genus Alacta in the Philippines and to confirm if uh, Alacta hamifera actually exists. In, in the Philippines. So what we did, or what I did, was I was to survey uh, specimens from different museums, uh, and among which I found several specimens of Alacta in the, of course, the UPLB Museum of Natural History. And I was lucky to be able to loan specimens from the California Academy of Science, which includes several Alacta specimens. And we also did recent phonistic surveys. So highlighted here are areas where I was able to collect uh, Alacta, so which includes uh, those in Cagayan, Binguet, Rizal, Pulilio Island, uh, of course, Mount Pakilin, Lagu uh, the portions of Southern Sierra Madre in Paki Laguna, uh, Mindoro Island, Palawan, and Sibuyan. So 
on based on on the specimens and the collections that we did. So we found possible new records. Uh, we, uh, we collected what looks like alacardii from Palawan and alacta diagrammatica from uh, from Mindanao. So these two species have been reported only in the islands of Sumatra. Uh, meanwhile, Alakta diagrammatica has also been reported in uh, mainland Malaysia, Singapore, Sumatra, and Java. So if these two are actually the species that they look like, then this would extend their distribution northward to, to the Philippines. So I am still unable to confirm whether they are these species because the, all the specimens that were available are only females. So we need males to dissect. We need to dissect the genitalia of the males in order to confirm whether or not these are alactacarnii and diagrammatia. Also, uh, all three species groups of alacta are present in the Philippines. So when, uh, a while ago, I mentioned that Princess reported alacta hamifera in the Philippines. So luckily enough, one of a uh, few of the specimens in, in California Academy of Science is likely to be where Princess based his report. So that specimen is from Mindoro, but upon closer inspection, the structures of the genitalia and even the patterns on the face doesn't actually fit that of the description of Alakta Hamifera. So for now, we are sure that uh, Princess's identification was incorrect. And therefore, Alakta Hamifera is, is not present in the country. So this is actually a new species of Alakta, which is found in Mount Iglit Bako in Mindoro Island. Similarly, there is another similar looking <laughs> species found in Puerto Princesa Palawan. But although they may look similar in terms of the patterns and of, and of size, uh, their genital structures actually indicate that they might be different. So for the Hamifera group, we have at least two species of Alacta. Uh, meanwhile, the Funevis group, which is only reported from Borneo, Sulawesi, and the island of New Guinea, is actually present in Luzon Island. So we have one species from Mount Isarog in Camarines Sur, and uh, two uh, from uh, different morphs of Alakta in Mount Mukiling. So initially, I thought these two were uh, different species based on their coloration. But uh, uh, apparently, they are the same species. So it's a bit confusing. A while ago, we saw, we saw two similar looking species, but are actually different based on the genital structure. Here we see two different looking species that are actually the same based on their genital structure. Uh, then, if that is not confusing enough, we have at least 10 different morphs, uh, 10 different species of polygrapha of Alacta in the Polygrapha species group, each being known only on a particular spot or place in, in the Philippines. So they are, some of them are from Cagayan, Baguio, Benguet, Bulacan, Rizal, uh, from Mount Makili, uh, in the southern portion of Sierra Madre in Paki Laguna, Polilio Island, Cebuan Island, and Shergal. So this makes you think, when how these species, or why does this group of species uh, occur allopatric of one another? So we may 
turn in, to look into the historical biogeography of Luzon Island, or at least the Philippines, uh, which previously were uh, were actually distinct separate islands you know, that, that merged throughout time. So in terms of species counts, uh, for the Fenebris group, we have three species from Luzon and one from Mindanao, sorry. There should be one from Mindanao here, the Alakta CF Diagrammatica. Uh, then we have two species from the Hamifera group in Mindoro and Palawan. And we have at least 11 species from the Polygrapha group, which is distributed throughout the Philippines. As for summary and conclusion, so we did our we reviewed the genus Alacta of the Philippines. So we removed the record of Alacta hamifera by Princess because it was based on a misidentified specimen. And we also recorded uh, Alacta CF carnei and Alacta CF diagrammatica, but we still need to collect males in order to verify the identity of this species. Uh, we noted that all species groups are present in the Philippines. And if you rec recall the distribution of the, the species within the, the three species groups, uh, Borneo actually has is, is in the middle of it all. Uh, if that in that case, Philippines would also be considered a uh, not really a hot spot but the center of diversity for, for this group, as all three species groups are present there, present here. You know? We actually rival Borneo in terms of the number of species of Alacta okay, within the country. And we also noted several undescribed species. So what else should we do? Uh, of course, we need to conduct additional survey on other areas in the country, especially in Visayas and Mindanao, because these islands are lacking in data. Not just these groups, but the entire cockroach order. Uh, we also need additional support for molecular data, especially if we want to see uh, how what drive the speciation of this, this genus, especially in, in, in the Philippines. You know? Perhaps uh, molecular clock work would help us discern the historical events, the geological events that help these species to, to spread and separate from one another. But of course, we need to review sibling species, as we can see, especially in the polygrapha species group, and to, uh, to review species locality reports. So what does this, this all mean? No? What does this imply? Well, as with the episode one uh, of this series of talks, uh, in terms of Philippine cockroach diversity, uh, we still are lacking data on several island groups. No? Uh, of course, Luzon is being is the most researched in terms of cockroach diversity because uh, it is but probably the most accessible to me. Uh, and we still have numerous undescribed species. So if these uh, patterns are seen in, that we see in the genus Alacta, uh, is also observed in different genera of cockroaches, particularly the, the brachypterous ones, the ones that are that have short wings and are unable to disperse into this uh, large space or distances. Now, in terms of Philippine insect diversity per se, uh, we still there are still a lot of orders that need attention. Uh, those highlighted in red are orders, uh, insect orders that has no recent publication in terms of Philippine diversity. Although I think Plecopter has some in recent, yeah. so excuse me for that. Uh, of 
course, uh, as I mentioned, there are a lot of neglect, neglected in order. And because of that, we still have numerous undescribed species. And I guess that's it. So I would like to thank the following institutions, municipalities, and personals who helped me with this research. And thank you for listening and it is me with you. Thank you, Christian. It is be with you also. Okay. Uh, we are. Thank you very much for that um, very interesting uh, presentation, Christian. Um, especially, you no, know, it's interesting to know that um, there are, there are more than one hundred uh, species, right, in the Philippines, and a big chunk of that is uh, you know endemic in the country, and I guess. Um, We'll just leave the questions uh, regarding or focusing on the taxonomy and systematics of cockroaches to our dear audience. Uh, we have uh, several questions already. All right, uh, first question uh, from, I think you could also read it, uh, the questions from your chat box, uh, yeah. Christian. So from Samuel Brillo, is there an existing phylogenomic data on Infrageneric groupings of Alacta. If none, what would be the pre preliminary analysis? Uh, what would be the preliminary analysis uh, which could be used to establish evolutionary relationships? So in terms of phylogeny of Alacta, I don't think there's any studies that have been conducted. Uh, many of the studies that are conducted uh, deals with large, larger groups. Uh, in terms of relationships within families, within some families, establishment of the family. But in within the large the, the, the group Alacta, uh, I don't think there's uh, any studies yet. Uh, preliminary analysis, well, of course, you could do with with morphological characterization and uh, cladistic analysis. Of course, you would need a large set of specimens of data in order to actually see uh, uh, links or evolutionary relationships within, within this group. Uh, of course, uh, I think you would need you would need more than species from the Philippines. Uh, you would need to examine species from other areas. Help okay. I answer the question. Yeah. So, okay, uh, questions from Willem Joshua Tan. Uh, uh, he has three questions. So the first question would be, what is the habitat habits and behavior of these uh, uh, the genus Alacta? Well, the Alactas are actually uh, forest dwellers. You know? So they live on, on trees, on tree trunks. Mm -hmm. So uh, habits, uh, they're nocturnal. Uh, they are active mostly at night. And you won't, it's very hard to find them at, at day because they, either hide under the barks or go on suspended suspended soils or leaves of, of the tree. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, next question. Um, wait. We just... Are the Philippine native cockroaches under threat uh, from cockroaches that are being introduced? Uh, there are some instances where in introduced cockroaches uh, are establishing populations in natural natural habitat or environment. Uh, one example is in a cave in we we've, we've examined before, uh, where Periplaneta americana or the household cockroaches has actually uh, invaded the entire the entire cave. So you won't be able to find uh, not just native cockroaches, but even make uh, cave dwelling or copterans, cricket. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, in some agroforestry areas or agricultural areas, uh, the Australasian cockroach are actually uh, quote unquote invading these areas, primarily because they are disturbed disturbed areas. Uh, some introduced latella are actually are also found in these areas. So, of course, when you find them. There, there are species that are being displaced. So there would be 
they are native, not just cockroaches, but other, of course, other insects that are under threat. Okay. So uh, related to that question, I have my own. Um, so what is, what is your opinion on the flourishing pet trade for uh, exotic cockroaches? And uh, are there cases where the, ex the exotic ones have become more rampant or invasive and have actually become household pests? But uh, in terms of uh, the pet trade, there are actually a lot of, uh, we, I listed around 11 species that are currently being uh, kept as pets or mm -hmm. as seed for pets. Uh, so far, no, none of them, or at least one of them, has been found in outside the pet trade, in, in mm -hmm. household homes. But what's, what's interesting here is that uh, very little, uh, well, not really interesting, there's very little information on how well they would survive in, in the wild. Mm -hmm. uh, reports of, well, if, if you trace uh, the history of in invasion or invasiveness of cockroaches, we, there are reports before of Gatella orientalis in the Philippines uh, during the Spanish occupation. Uh, and then afterwards, during the American occupation, uh, the American cock or early American occupation, the Periplaneta Americana, has actually uh, displaced the Oriental cockroach. So, so currently, I haven't seen a Blatella, Blata Orientalis in in any household. So, at least in that case, uh, the introduced cockroaches are only displacing the previously introduced species. So maybe the the integrity of the ecosystem has something to do with it because mm -hmm. an intact ecosystem could balance or repel uh, in invasive or introduced species. Uh, this has also been observed in, in rats or in, in frogs, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so at least uh, that gives some perspective on that issue. And um, uh, third question by Willem Joshua Tan. How big of a contribution does these cockroaches have? Can, can, what can they do in terms of uh, pollination? But, uh, there are only a few reports of, of species being pollinated by cockroaches. But mm -hmm. in a previous study by, I think it was FISC, uh, somewhere in South America, uh, they noticed that the population of, of bees are very few in the canopy and the emergent layers of the forest. And they hypothesized that cockroaches actually do a lot of pollination in that strata of the forest because the populations of, of cockroaches there are actually very, are high, higher compared to other, other species. Mm -hmm. So uh, in terms of how big, we still have no data on it, but there's probably a lot, a lot more than we expect. So from Hens Christian uh, Fuentes, uh, question is: What are uh, what tests should be done in order to conduct or in order to differentiate one species of cockroach to another? Well, in terms of uh, if you're going to do it morphologically or based most more, more uh, on the characters per se, uh, there are a lot of characters that you have to look into in order to identify at least up to the genus level. Once you get there, uh, you would need to actually extract the genitalia of the cockroaches. Uh, the genitalia, I, I think I've shown it from in the slides before, actually very important characters in, in differentiating species. Although there are cases that they are not used, mm -hmm. you know, but there are other characters that are being used. Uh, if you can't use uh, the male genitalia, some groups would use the females, female genitalia. Others would use, uh, I think, the proventriculus. Uh, but if you have a rather problematic group, uh, and uh, there's always a choice to do molecular analysis, uh, if, if you have enough uh, resources with you. So a question from Gary Antonio Lirio, um, what, precious, uh, what pressures from the environment uh, would be able to drive uh, this cockroach 
to evolve and become uh, even more diverse. So uh, how do they differ in terms of their niche? And that's the question. Hmm, pressure, environmental pressure. Well, taxes have, have survived uh, for a very long time in, 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 in the world. In the world. Uh, one of their key characters that, are, that enabled them to, to survive is that they are, what's that word again? So they are omnivores. So they are able to feed uh, on, on, on decomposing matter again. Although there are some species that are specialized, you know? some species that uh, select particular niche or particular habitat where they, they, are, they are found. So we have the cave dwellers which can only be found in caves. Uh, some species are actually uh, amphibious, so they're, they are found on uh, free flowing waters, they actually swim. Uh, for the Alaska group, I think it's more of the isolation of these of, of the islands that allowed them to to diverge to to uh, to diversify to speciate. Uh, uh, that's uh, the thing. So we need. I think we could do molecular clocks in order to to understand better how these groups of organisms speciate. Uh, their their time of evolution or, or splitting. Yeah. So how do they differ in terms of niche? Uh, there are some species of cockroaches that are uh, specialized for strata of the forest. So for Alaka, I think uh, at least most of, of what I've seen is that they live in between the canopy layer and the, uh, the low-lying vegetation. So they occupy that particular area of, of the forest. Of course, you'd, you'd see different groups of, of cockroaches in the leaf litter, in the upper canopy layers. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think this question from Lawrence Alamo is, uh, was partially answered, but um, maybe you could uh, come back to it. What are, the, what are some key factors that affect the reproduction and the distribution of the genus uh, Alacta in the Philippines? Key factors. Uh, the Alacta is actually part of the subfamily Pseudophilodromini. So, like the, the household cockroach, they produce uh, tiny little eggs uh, that are in a capsule called the Oatica. So, they, before they lay these eggs, they try to find a suitable place where to deposit it. So, they chew, chew for example, the wood, they, they will chew on it then deposit the egg and cover it with the chewed particles of wood so in order to hide it. Uh, in terms of distribution, uh, as you may find, uh, interestingly, uh, those alacta that live, that are distributed on, on the islands, for example, those in Luzon, actually have smaller wings. So they are, in a way, brachypterous. So they are unable to to disperse in, in long distances compared to those that were found in, let's say, in Palau and in Mindoro that have longer wings. Perhaps uh, the, the connection of Palawan to, to Borneo or to mainland Asia before has allowed these organisms to fly into Palawan, then to Mindoro. On the other hand, those from Luzon uh, are unable to do so because they have shorter wings. So in terms of distribution, they became narrowly distributed to particular particular areas. Mm -hmm. I hope I answered that question. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Lawrence, if you have uh, other questions, maybe you could just directly contact uh, Christian um, later. And uh, we have a question from Dr. Jonathan Koch uh, from the U.S. Department of Agricultural Research Services. So his question is, uh, can you find any native or endemic cockroaches um, in urban places? So, hmm. Tricky question. Hmm. <laughs> uh, so far, uh, it's actually hard to find 
uh, native or endemic cockroaches in urban places. Uh, but in some instances where uh, the urban area is located near near a, a creek or a, a grassland area or a natural habitat, there are some instances that cockroaches get attracted to light. So you, you'd find them there, but more, they're mostly accidental. Okay. So uh, from Gabriel Fetalvero, uh, is Tenigma uh, present in this uh, genius? Uh, does it pose any evolutionary advantage than having uh, uh, to have stronger hind wings? I guess he is referring to Tegmina here. Mm -hmm. Tegmina being the first pair of wings. Uh, yes, they are present in the genus. Uh, does it pose any evolutionary advantage than having stronger hind wings? Well, in terms of protection probably yes uh, especially since these the members the several members of this genus are no are unable to to go to long distance flights so yeah i think it does <laughs> okay uh, any more questions uh, from our audience and just Type it here in the chat box. And while we're waiting for a few more questions, probably I'll read some of mine. Um, Inchan, um, how would you compare the endemis uh, how would you compare the endemism of our Philippine cockroaches uh, compared to the other uh, mega diverse countries? Well, in terms of Endemicity, we are actually at, at par with several uh, areas with, mm -hmm. with high uh, diversity of cockroaches, such as uh, Madagascar and South America. Uh, but in terms of endemicity per land area, we're actually, we actually have a higher percent endemicity per land area compared to those, to those regions. Primarily because of our of the insularity of, or the archipelagic nature of, of the Philippines. Okay, and um, what do you suggest? You know, um, how would you, you know, spe especially for your uh, research, how would you increase the discovery of new species in the Visayas region, uh, wherein you managed to see that there are uh, a lack of uh, of uh, species accounts and discoveries and uh, considering that now we have several restrictions in due to the pandemic so uh, what what are your suggestions <laughs> uh, actually well, what was lacking with what I do is I wasn't able to contact any any museum or any collection mm -hmm. based in the Visaya so that is uh, a weak point in my side. But of course, it would be nice. It would be better to to conduct collections within within those those regions, uh, especially since uh, very few are actually conducting uh, collections at night. So mm -hmm. if usually you only do that do do collections at night if you have a particular target species that are nocturnal and so. Uh, so maybe yeah. Uh, first, we'll try to contact uh, museums there to check their collections. Then, hopefully, we'll we'll be able to conduct research there. Yes. <laughs> and and I, and I think maybe this is um, a good opportunity to probably um, you know entice other students and possibly their their faculty their advisors mm. to look at uh, making or you know um, enticing other students to take up uh, cockroach taxonomy and systematics in their own areas in their own yeah. SUCs especially those located uh, in Mindanao and in the Visaya so uh, you don't have to do everything you know especially you're you're the only one uh, existing in Luzon I I think so and uh, it would be it would be hard for you to you know study 
all of the areas in the Philippines without uh, a bit of help from others. Okay. So from Willem, uh, I think this would be probably the last question. Uh, are the populations of native uh, uh, cockroaches uh, increasing and increasing or decreasing overall, uh, especially with possible threats like uh, agriculture and uh, deforestation? So this one is, is actually a hard question to answer, primarily because we don't have uh, population data prior to, to this, the existence of this threat. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you think about it, uh, the uh, habitat destruction or, or land use change actually uh, threats to, to not just cockroaches, but but all, all wildlife, no? So once you, you slice to a forest, to, to a natural habitat, of course, you'd, you'd see changes in, in population. Uh, once you introduce uh, species that are non-native, then it would be possible for these to compete or even out-compete the, the natural fauna or flora of the area. So. Okay, so uh, Leslie Obiso' um, uh, comment is uh, collaborations from other SUCs would be possible. I guess Leslie is a, a faculty uh, from another SUC, and if you're interested to collaborate with uh, Christian, uh, just probably email him at uh, can I can I say the email address? Yeah, sure. uh, it's uh, CC Lucanas at uh, up.edu.ph uh, so this this question is uh, comes from from Perry Buenavente of uh, of the National Museum of the Philippines so how many epicialists do we have in the Philippines well uh, I don't think it I would be glad to say that I'm the only one because there's so much work to do uh, Actually, within within Southeast Asia, there's only a couple of, of uh, person working on cockroaches. So what I do is I, I even help uh, other other areas in, in, in help other scientists mm -hmm. would like to work on on cockroaches so just to to have this community where we we can work together and and help each other in terms of, of describing or, or discovering this species. So I think a few of our friends are here, like Senraj from India, uh, mm -hmm. Mao Sheng from Singapore, which I still owe a description. <laughs> yeah. Marami ka panggagawe. Christian, and uh, I think the, the work uh, is cut out for you. And uh, uh, I guess it would be a good, uh, you know, it would be very good for other taxonomists and systemat uh, and systematists, those who are uh, also working on similar groups, to take a look at uh, uh, cockroaches especially Philippine cockroaches. So I think we don't have any questions to be read here at the chat box. And uh, our online evaluation form is already posted at the chat box. So please uh, click on that and answer it so that you can receive a certificate of participation within the day. So um, before we end our program, let me just thank you, Christian, for being our uh, resource person for today. And of course, to you, every one of you, our dear audiences who are, you know, really following our webinar series program. So we hope to give more uh, learning events um, in the near future. Uh, we will be awarding Christian with the digital certificate of uh, recognition let me just uh, share my screen okay so the museum of natural history office of the vice chancellor for research and extension uh, awards the certificate of recognition to christian c lucanias for serving as 
resource person during the 2021 MNH Biodiversity se- Seminar uh, entitled Roach Talks, Episode 2, the Cockroach Genus Alacta of the Philippines held on 21 April 2021 from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Philippine Standard Time via Zoom. So, And in witness whereof, the signature of our director, Dr. Marian P. De Leon, is hereby mm-hmm. affixed. So congratulations, Inchan. And we hope to, uh, to have more topics from you in our future biodiversity seminars. And uh, make sure that you evaluate our... Uh, webinar the link has been posted in the chat box but if you want to answer the form later just go to bit.ly slash 2021-bss-eval our form will accept responses until 3 p.m today uh, do check our website at mnh.uplb.com edu.ph uh, drop us an email at mnh.uplb at up.edu.ph and we are and we are in Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, uh, Instagram just look for the handle UPLB Museum uh, the recording of this uh, webinar will be uploaded soon at youtube.com slash UPLB Museum go to our Facebook page and uh, give us a like uh, UPLB Museum of Natural History is also uh, found in Wikipedia and Trip Advisor. So with that, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Our next webinar will be on Monday. Uh, we, our speaker will be Dr. Ma Vivian Camacho of the Institute of Biological Sciences and uh, a curator for freshwater fishes at the Museum of Natural History. Just go to our web, to our Facebook page, UPLB Museum, to click on the registration form link. So with that, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat and take care.